We're at the trailhead of the Pembina Valley Provincial Park uh, trails. Uh, there's about six or seven different trails you can uh, travel on through the park uh, down into a tributary of the Pembina River. And uh, we'll uh, follow along one trail called the Sunrise Trail for a while and then we'll uh, switch over to a Boulder Creek Trail which will actually follow very close to the river where we expect to see a lot of outcrop. We should be seeing a, a range of formations here from uh, the uh, Boyne or Niobrara uh, down into the uh, Morden. So what we're at the base of uh, about, uh, oh, it must be about 30 feet high, about 10 meters high, uh, an outcrop of the Odonna Shale. It is about 80 to 90 million years old. It is actually younger than some of the other shale uh, beds we'll see further uh, downstream. Uh, we're on a tributary to the uh, Pembina River which is uh, way off in the distance uh, to our north. This is a piece of the Odonna Shale and uh, like I was mentioning at the bottom it is a fairly flat looking piece of material. It's not sharp at all although it is quite angular the way it breaks but it certainly won't cut your finger. And it certainly wouldn't cut a car's tire, it's, it's uh, really quite brittle. But it'll crumble and fall apart and uh, it's not very uh, rigid uh, through time. After about four years on a road, it'll be just plain mud. It's got uh, manganese coating usually on fracture surfaces. That's what that blackish uh, material that you see on the underside of this particular piece. The top tends to be a greenish olive color uh, to it when it's wet. When it's dry it's really a, a very light gray in color and that's what you see on the ground all the way around us. So like I said it's a, a silicious shale. If I uh, put a little bit of acid on the uh, shale it will uh, not react to the uh, droplet of acid at all and we refer to it as being uh, dead. And there is no effervescence, no bubbling characteristic at all coming off of the shale. This can be contrasted later on when we get down into the bottom of the valley with the Boyne or Niobrara. And you'll see a lot of fizzing on the surface if you put some acid on it. The park trails are uh, user friendly. Uh, here's one of a typical signposts that they have erected along the trails. And here there's two sets of signages. Uh, one in green is a porcupine marking the porcupine trail and in yellow on the far side of the post is the sunrise trail. Uh, these trails are uh, designed to take you through various aspects of the park, uh, the vegetation and uh, the geology and they're very useful uh, to follow along. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow along the yellow sign, uh, uh, signs of the Sunrise Trail and we'll come back on the Porcupine Trail and we're going to come right back to this bridge. Uh, this is the main junction for a lot of trails. We're further downstream uh, past the last outcrop and uh, where we're situated is uh, in the uh, lowermost part of the uh, Boyne. The uh, grayish colored rock is a fresh surface. The uh, bleaching uh, that you see over here is uh, a white uh, uh, color change that has occurred as the shale dries out. It turns this sort of creamy color as such. Now if you look over to the far left you'll see a change in the rock. The rock above it is the same kind of rock like you see here. But directly below that there's a color change and the shales there become quite black uh, relative to the uh, gray or uh, there it's sort of a, a yellow staining on the surface. If you put acid on the rocks uh, that are uh, below there you'll see that they're uh, uh, mainly non-calcareous. There's a few calcareous beds but essentially non-calcareous. Whereas if you put acid on any of the rock behind my head all the way up to the top uh, all of that rock will be calcareous. Uh, it will uh, definitely fizz if you put acid on it. Now, uh, if that's the Morden, then uh, it'll be about 150, 200 feet thick. And then you'll get down to the next unit below, which is the Favelle, which is also a calcareous unit. 
So we're into uh, geology that uh, has uh, rocks that uh, will fizz if you put acid on it and not fizz. Uh, it, 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 it depends whether it's calcareous or not. Now, uh, all of these beds uh, could have uh, some uh, particular usage. Uh, some of the Boyne beds uh, around me have been used on uh, roads, uh, but it, they crumble and they will turn into mud over a period of time. So they're not a real good uh, surface uh, material for roads. Uh, the high uh, calcium content means that they could be mixed into uh, cement uh, production. Uh, the, the clay component is something that's uh, required for cement. So you could use these beds uh, to produce uh, a Portland type of cement. Now this is different than the Babcock beds that I was telling you about, which would be above my head. And if you look extremely uh, uh, to the far west uh, of this outcrop, or uh, uh, towards the southwest, uh, you'll see that uh, the beds are the buff colored units. So the Babcock beds I was mentioning uh, before are uh, 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 located above my head and uh, uh, further to the uh, west. And those beds were used to produce uh, cement uh, back in the 1890s, 1900s. Further to show uh, this difference between a calcareous rock and a non-calcareous rock, I have a piece of the Adana shale uh, in here, which is the one that I collected at the shale slide outcrop. Put a drop of acid on it and it's totally dead. You can see that there's no effervescence or fizzing. Now in contrast, this is part of that lower calcareous unit of the Boyne. And you can see right away the amount of fizzing that occurs on this specimen. So the lower rock being the Boyne is calcareous. The O'Donna shale up higher in the section, a siliceous shale is non-calcareous. And you can see the extent of the bubble development. This is that first speckled shale and uh, that's the Boyne. Down here there is a very rich organic black shale and when I was digging into it it really smelled with almost an oily or a sulfury kind of smell and that is quite common for the black shales whether you're in the Pemina member of the uh, Pier Shale or if you're into the Morden member of the Carlisle or even deeper in the section if you're into the Asheville formation. The black shale has this very characteristic dark black look and almost a petroleum or uh, sulfury kind of smell. So this is quite, quite distinctive of the Morden member. Again, it's non-calcareous. If you put acid on it, it won't fizz. So this is uh, for, like I said, all intents and purposes, uh, I would place the contact here between the overlying limestone and the shales below. Pembina River. Wow, there's a sight for sore eyes. Uh, we ha would like to thank a few people uh, who helped make uh, this particular provincial park possible. The family uh, that uh, uh, was responsible for the actual uh, donation of the land uh, was the Wozniak family. And uh, they donated the property to the Nature Conservancy uh, Canada. Uh, uh, that uh, group uh, ended up uh, uh, finalizing uh, the uh, uh, transfer uh, of the uh, property into the Provincial Valley Provincial Park.